Okay, it looks like we got another uh, cap that is just going to require a 12 point hex bit that we need to remove. Okay, next step is going to be removing these C-clips that hold, the, uh, hold in the wrist pins for the that connect the pistons to your uh, connecting rods. We're going to do that for the both front cylinders, which are number one and number two. And uh, yeah, you need to make sure that uh, both cylinders are, are at bottom dead center in order for you to have access to these. There's one. Keep track of uh, which one goes where, okay. And here's number two. Okay, now it's time to remove the wrist pins from the number one and number two cylinders. Uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have to use a long, uh, thin screwdriver. We're gonna go in the back of the block. And then, uh, we're gonna have to fit this around the, the rod for the number, for this, uh, what is that number? Number four cylinder and uh, rest it against the back of the, the wrist pin for the number two cylinder which is in the front of this cylinder and then we're going to hit this with a hammer and our wrist pin is going to come out from the the front okay well, notice how I got this taped up especially the tip we don't want to scratch anything while in there okay Barely long enough, but there it is. There's a wrist pin for our number two cylinder. By the way, twins, uh, <laughs> I forgot to inspect this, but uh, yeah, this obviously looks okay. You know, you get some uh, oil residue on the sides, but no mark, no marks, or it's not. Uh, this is not where our rod knock is. Where our knock is coming from, okay? But if this was uneven, or you could, there was obvious grooves in there, you know, then uh, you probably wanna. Replace this and have it to the machine. When you take it to the machine shop, let them know about that too. Okay. Okay. Now cylinder number one. Okay. Since I just don't have the long enough uh, screwdriver in my arsenal, just went ahead and made one just out of uh, just some uh, scrap metal I had laying around. Just tape it up, and this is thin enough to to fit around the the rod for the other cylinder. So this will work. And this one looks okay as well. Okay, now the same thing for the number uh, three and four cylinder. First, the uh, little C clips. There's number one, two, two three. And here's uh, number four. There's wrist pin number three. This one looks good too. And here's the final wrist pin, and this one looks good as well. Okay, next it's time to remove the pistons. The way we go about doing this is uh, we make them, we get them to top dead center. Once they're top dead center, we actually keep going. Once the other one gets close there, that means that the rod has gone back inside the, the block. And then we just kind of push and twist on these, which is easier said than done. But uh, do the same thing on this side. Okay, the one on this side work, it just pops out and we can remove our uh, piston. This is the number one piston. There we go. And looks okay. Make sure you mark the, which way it came out, okay? To put you, when you go to put it back in, we don't want to put it in backwards. There we go. There's Piston number two. This one looks okay too around the edges. Okay, now time to remove the, the other two pistons. Basically the same thing. Also, it's a great idea to wrap these uh, your rod, uh, your connecting rods, and uh, some rags. So.
so that they don't scratch the, the, the cylinder surface. And now we just twist and push these and the same thing for the other side. I actually have to uh, <clears throat> turn it the other side. And there's number three. Oh, and I think I found out where a rod knock is coming from. <laughs> Cylinder number one. None of the other ones sound anything. Well, they don't even move. They're firm. This is the only one that's loose and it's knocking right now. Okay. Okay, next it's time to start removing the bolts that go around the circumference of the, the block. You can see those five on top. There's gonna be a bunch in the inside the water jackets on this side, and on the other side, and again on the oil on the in the oil pump uh, side, and some on the back. But uh, before we do that, it's a it's a good idea to get like a piece of box, get a box, and then uh, mark your cylinders and start making holes for all the bolts where they're gonna go. So when you pull them, you just put them here. As you can see, I got this side, which is the that's number two and four cylinder. And then we got five bolts on the on top. Already got them uh, marked here. So when I pull them, I'm just gonna make a cut here and just put them inside here, just to keep a track of, just to keep track of them. Okay, these are all 12 millimeters, by the way. Okay, next we flip the cylinder head on its side when it's facing the number two and four uh, cylinders upwards and we're gonna remove two bolts that are inside the coolant the coolant jackets and which are 12 millimeter which require a 12 millimeter 12 point socket. All right, next we need to flip it on the other side and remove the bolts inside the coolant jackets on the other side. But before we do that, there's something else I forgot. If this side is, a, is to set flat, we need to remove this bracket, which is held in place by three 12 millimeter bolts. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do this side with the engine resting on the cardboard. Um, on, the, on this side, there's two on the top, two and then two bolts on the bottom okay next we're going to remove this little 10 millimeter bolt that's at the bottom of the engine connecting the, the two uh, the two halves together. Okay, there's two more two more bolts here that I almost missed. They're right uh, behind the number number three cylinder. This guy and this guy. I'm just gonna move uh, remove those next. This is also a 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, here's the last three bolts that are holding this block together. The top two are. Uh, uh, 12 millimeter 12 point bolts and the bottom one is just a regular 12 millimeter bolt so we're gonna remove these next okay so after removing this last bolt we flip our engine to the side where number three and number one cylinders are facing up then uh, it's time to try and separate our block. Uh, watching on uh, YouTube and reading on some forums, I've, uh, the most common way of separating these two is to stick a car jack here, and then uh, against the bell housing on the bottom side, then you put the top side, you rest it uh, against here, and then you just crank the car jack, and then that pushes them apart. But I also saw somewhere that uh, someone mentioned that uh, you can also use the crankshaft and the connecting rod to separate them. By the way, I'm doing it now. 
um, which is pretty genius. I wish I could get take credit for this, but uh, <laughs> I'll find the person that mentioned this on the forum, and I'll I'll put a I'll mention their name because uh, it's just too just pretty pretty smart. But uh, anyway, yeah, you just stick uh, screwdrivers through here through the access point for the wrist pins. You go they go through the connecting rods like this. And then you brace them against the other side of the cylinder. Make sure it doesn't go, it doesn't touch the other connecting rod. The same thing for the bottom. And then we're gonna use the crankshaft to crank it. And then uh, the connecting rods and the crankshaft, their force is gonna help separate this uh, the rear of the block. And then if you have to, we'll do the same thing for the front cylinders. And uh, then after that, we should be able to lift the top part off the off the bottom part and have access to our crankshaft and our connecting rods. There we go. See, it's separating from this side. All right, guys, this corner is just not cooperating. All the other corners have separated, but uh, this side is stuck on pretty good. So, uh, what I'm gonna try is, uh, you know, actually, since this side is is coming loose nicely, I stuck back one of these uh, one of these bolts down here. It's on there, pretty loose. And uh, what I'm gonna do is. Uh, you know what, what happens is when you crank the when you're turning the crankshaft to loosen these to separate these this side lifts up a lot sooner so I guess it kind of pushes that side down even further so uh, with this bolt here I'm gonna hope this is gonna hold it on pace a little bit for that guy for that side to start separating okay so that's what I'm gonna try next yeah that worked I can't believe it that worked too easy okay now I think we just we should be able to wiggle this off. There we go. We are able to wiggle it off. There it is. Finally. And here's our here's our suspect connecting rod. Should be number three, which feels feels pretty good. All the main seals look pretty good. Yeah. Yep. They're all feel really smooth. The bearings are gonna be on this side. As you can see. I don't know. This this rear one feels a little not as smooth as it should be. But uh but I mean not an expert on this, but I don't think this is anything out of the ordinary. So, if I had to guess, I would say this is all that's bad with this engine. Pop off our rear main seal. Get out of that. Next, it's time to get our crankshaft out of here. And we lost one of the main bearings, I guess. Okay, it's uh, time to remove this connecting rod, and this is held in by just these two, uh, two 12 millimeter nuts. Okay. Here's our bearings. Okay, and this is all chewed up badly. This is not dirt. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see, but. This, this bearing is all chewed up really bad, but uh, good news is our crankshaft feels really smooth. Oh yeah, look look how loosely, well, it doesn't even fit this, this bearing. It's, you know, all the other ones, if you take them out, they're gonna get stuck on there. It's actually gonna be kind of hard to press them in, but this one has this one is either too thin, well, it's probably too thin, and it's also has probably worn out this side pretty badly on the connecting rod. So, so yeah, I don't know if I have to get a new connecting rod or they're gonna be able to do something with this. But uh, again, this is all going to the machine shop now. So, uh, this video will be continued when everything gets back from the machine shop.